Today's Friday. They say it's Friday here. That's when we are. And, uh, man, I've been craving sushi, you know. I've been craving it. Craving the sushi. Now, I don't remember when they first tried sushi. That raw fish. I remember the first time I was at this sort of Asian restaurant, as in it was Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, so it was a blend. Nice blend in New York. It wasn't, I can't say like Manny Hanny, New York, the city. Kind of like upstate area. I can't say it was the best thing I ever had. I was younger too, so maybe I was a bit wary, overly wary. But you know, um, yeah. What really inspired me with sushi is I remember an episode of Doug, the, the old Nick, Nickelodeon show Doug about a, a kid and new kid in the neighborhood. And he learns about Bluffington. And that's that's the city, Bluffington. And, and he has an episode. I believe it's an aunt, maybe even grandmother. I'm I'm supposing grand aunt. If I remember exactly, it's been a while. Tries to get him to try new things, and ultimately, I believe the the new thing was sushi for the try and expand his horizons and all that stuff. Stiff. And uh, yeah, just trying to comfort him, saying, "Oh, they're just like like little tires, little tires, little tires." But right now, I'm. I'm thinking about salmon nigiri, you know, just the fillet of fish on a bed of rice, you know. Fillet of fish, fillet of fish sushi. Now that's what McDonald's should do for some uh, awkward marketing. Fillet of fish sushi. I'm not even sure what fish they use. I'm sure that'd be frightening. Probably just be called kimbap though, it's kimbap. Yeah, that's the or Korean style sushi, but the food is uh, still cooked. I've only tried to make sushi a couple of times by myself. No, can't say it always went well. It wasn't perfect. No, it wasn't bad. Or the two times I've done it. My understanding is about the curing process of the meat as well. Aging, which is surprising. You know, it's like, wait, it's supposed to be fish. Fresh, right? Fresh, fresh, fresh. No, sometimes, you know, it's just about the aging of the fish. And, you know, and um, we're getting some nori, some, so no, no kelp, kelp, dried kelp. Use that as part of a curing process. Of salmon, tuna. You know, basically just put two pieces together, throw in the fridge for a little bit. Work at a restaurant with a sushi guy. He would do that. But salmon, just leave it sort of curing for at least 24 hours after he cut this giant filet, you know? But I would have to say, even though it's sort of a, a Western flavor, salmon sushi is one of my favorites just because of the fats. The fats, right? You know, I love fat. Salmon fat is just delectable. Personally, like if you're gonna cook salmon, one of my favorite ways is salmon steaks. You know, it's like a section of that fish, and you're gonna get some of that backbone, sure. But the, the beautiful part of it is that you're gonna get like all the fattiness off of those bones and the backbone, and it's, just, ah, it's, it's, it's so fatly good. I tell you, tell you, some of my favorite fat comes from the salmon.
remember salmon being called more of a Western sushi dish, as was salmon, of course, not really made of Japan. So that was not part of the eating culture, you know? I mean, I guess that'd be like us adding deep fried dog to a menu. It's like, what? Deep fried dog, what would you do that for? We've been frying possum for 20 years. Maybe. Well, actually, what am I fried possum? You guys know hooker from fried possum, let me know. Here are my loop friend. Nah, we don't know each other. Fried possum. I, I, I mean, there has to be like gaminess to it. You know, gaminess. Maybe a little, a little swampy. Does roadkill have a roadkill taste? They're eating roadkill. It's like it has that road 66 flavor. Maybe, I don't know. Now, is roadkill like a like clean kill in hunting you know I mean I, like can you just run over a deer on the road just say hey clean kill man I'm sure there are laws and whatnot and regulations to and all that which I have no idea about I, I am no hunter I'm no hunter Not against it. I mean, they're animals. We eat them. I'd say it's lost, not maniacal torture and just uh, an excuse to hurt something. Uh, I'm all about hunting. Getting back to the primal root of collecting our own food. I get people. I can do. People can do that. Just, yeah, we'll do the work. Or I want to be badass as hell about it. You know, just badass. Just, just go out there with a, a knife and hunt, and swinging through the trees, jumping. You know, just just hunt down a bear for like three weeks. Finally, when it sleeps, just jump on its back and stab it, stab it deep or something. I don't know. You, you, you kind of like more fair. You know, you got a gun against a bear. Come on, I mean, you got you got to hunt. You got to hunt and wait and be quiet and track and all that nonsense I understand and okay it's not nonsense but all that skill is required but I don't want to not up to doing that it's not me I, I don't desperately need elk horns on my wall either I, I mean I, I want some slab comic books instead slabs nah you know back to that I, slabs Slap comic book, CGG rated. I, I, it's never been my, I never got it. Never understood it. I mean, I guess it's nice having that preserved book to an extent, but you don't get to enjoy the book, right? I mean, it's just there in a state of in its state, kind of like a toy in a package that you can never play, that you'll never play with. I mean, is it a toy anymore? Or is it just an action figure, figurine to make yourself, to make it sound better to people? I don't, I don't know. So it's supposed to be a, an art object, which I guess could be taken as, but if you're not able to hold the toy, it just feels like it takes away from the art of the object. I don't know, that's just me though. Me, bro. So I prefer to keep my books bag and board my comics. You know, I, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to eat the sushi. We'll see. Bag and boarded. Bag and boarded. <laughs> you know, I mean, I hang mine on the wall. I do. I have a little range on the wall of the books. Some of the books I get. You know, and. I see it's like my own little art collection that I can uh, play with, change out. You know, 
just hang around my little room, my little walls, and, you know, I'm married, so having my own space to be able to enjoy those is nice, because I'm not sure if my wife and I will be able to agree on to what cover we can put out in the living room to show off in the world, though. So, who knows, maybe we'll find some there are beautiful covers. I don't know why I'm thinking of it right now, but this is a recent Thor cover where it was a variant and it was like a van with an epic fantasy painting on the side of it on the cover of this Thor book. And I just I would think that'd be a great giant size painting maybe to hang up. I don't know why I'm choosing the light pen right now. Maybe because I like scratchiness. As I maybe mentioned before, I'm still getting better practicing again. I don't necessarily have a style. I don't have the, the King Dork look down quite yet. Much. So, looks like we were interrupted by a phone call earlier, as I'm still using, learning how to use YouTube. And I kept drawing, sketching, not looking at what happened. So if you're going to at least show you the end product, at least close to the end product. I'm just screwing around. I, I, I was going to draw sushi. I was talking about that. But maybe I cut off where I decided to make this thing into some alien demon slug bearing children. But yeah, it's we're cut off. I'm just gonna leave it here. Sorry, I could not show the entire process. I'm learning about this technology and learning about how uh, the phone works as a recording device. So I'm trying to keep this simple. Clean! I have blue eggs. Some blue eggs. Yeah, yeah. Disgusting blue eggs full of these things. Yeah, we'll just stop there. You all have a good day. Later, guys. Gals. Whoever.